All right. Uh, it is. It is Thursday, May 18th, 2023, 7 p.m. This is the Mount Lebanon Zoning Hearing Board. This is the time and place to hear Appeal 1854. Property owner is Karen Matlack, 1099 Mississippi Avenue, Pittsburgh 15216. Appellant is Aaron Huntley, H-U-N-T-L-E-Y, uh, -E at the same address. And the location for the appeal is the same address. Uh, in our possession, we have the cover sheet uh, for the matter. We have the application. We have a letter of authorization uh, from Karen Matlack to authorize Aaron Huntley to act on her behalf regarding this matter. We have a letter from Aaron Huntley with attachments. Uh, looks like one is an aerial view from the Allegheny County GIS. One is a, a topography map of the same. We have a survey from Adidas Engineering, L-I-A-D-I-S, dated February 3, 2010. Several photographs from Ms. Huntley. Uh, we also have a copy of the uh, advertisement for the Pittsburgh Post Gazette South, the zoning hearing notice to neighbors, and four color photographs of the property taken by the zoning office. So um, at this time, I will ask anybody who is going to. Uh, uh, provide any testimony to stand and be sworn in by the reporter. You can stand. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'll invite you forward to uh, to present your case. If you can identify yourself, please. Um, hello, my name is Erin Huntley. Um, I reside at 1099 Mississippi Avenue in a multi-generational home with my mother, my daughter, and my fiance. Um, I am asking for relief of ordinance numbers 203.5.3, which requires a 35-foot setback, and 808.3.1, which does not allow a fence in a front yard. As you can see from figure one in my zoning um, hearing application, my home is bordered by Mississippi Avenue to the east and Kama Alley to the north. Um, Kama Alley also coincides with the borough of Dormont municipal line. I would like to erect a picket fence in the northern portion of my property along Kama Alley. As per the ordinance, my home has two front yards and erection of a fence as proposed is prohibited. Due to the location of my home on the parcel, very little outdoor space is available to the south and west. Um, as shown in figure two, as well as photographs number one and two, the topography of my parcel is quite steep to the south and west. Erection of a fence in accordance with the code as shown in figure three allows for very little usable green space within the fenced area due to the topography and will place the fence immediately adjacent to my neighbor's home. The proposed fence layout, however, present, presented in my permit application does not infringe upon the front yard along Mississippi Avenue, is more aesthetic, allows for significantly more usable space, does not, is not located immediately adjacent to my neighbor's home, and does not alter the essential character of my neighborhood. Um, I'm not sure if I could present this at this time, but I do have some photographs of some other homes um, in the neighborhood that do have. And these were all taken right from Google Maps. So they have the addresses um, in the upper left hand corner. Pause just a second for the report. Uh, we were received a copy labeled Exhibit A for appeal number 1854. It looks to be. five printed pages with pictures. 
Please proceed. Um, the fence will not substantially or permanently impair the appropriate use or development of adjacent properties, nor will it be detrimental to the public welfare, will allow for me to protect my property from vehicles, animals, and the many kids that walk to and from Keystone Oaks um, Middle and High School located right down the street from me. Um, that's about it. I don't know if you have any questions regarding any of the documents that I provided um, or if I can fill in um, any data gaps. Sure. Um, Mr. Campanaro, do you have questions? Um, I, I, I do. Um, the fences shown in the, that you gave us in these photographs, are there any al actually along Kama Avenue itself do you know, that you know? Um, there are, um, but they're actually, there's no other homes in Mount Lebanon along okay. Kama Alley. It's all Dormont. Um, but there is a fence. Um, I believe it's two houses down from us along Kama Alley with a, it's a six foot high privacy fence. Okay. And what type of fence would you be proposing to build? Obviously you said picket, but. Yeah, um, a four foot high wooden picket fence. Why, why, I guess, when I look at. Primarily for my dog. Okay. Um, you know, if we were in a more secluded area, an invisible fence would be a great alternative. And I have used an invisible fence in the past. Um, my past dog was attacked on three different occasions in our yard um, from other dogs just getting in there. Um, and also, I mean, it's just a deterrent. There's lots of activity in the area. Um, so once they break through that fence, they're they're gone. What what led to the size of fence your the location? So you're sh you're showing it five feet from Comma Alley, or why not um, right on the property? Why why not right on the road or ten feet back? Or if it, what's why it's five feet? To avoid it being hit by vehicles. Okay. Um, and provide better line of sight. I have no further questions at this time. Thank you, Mr. Rother. Do you know about how much traffic or how heavily used is Coma Alley? Um, it's it's used as a cut through. Um, a lot of people don't want to go down to the very end of Mississippi to turn around, so they'll use that to access um, and get back up to West Liberty. Um, I don't have a number of how many vehicles per day. So would you characterize that as as, as busy or seldom used or kind of moderate? I, I would assume moderate. Um, it's more often used if they have um, like soccer practice down at Kelton Field. And is the intersection of Coma and Mississippi, and are there stop signs there? No nor is it labeled. So the, <clears throat> um, the ordinance um, requires five, there's five criteria in the ordinance in order for us to grant variance. I'm gonna walk through each five of them. Um, the first one states that that there are unique physical circumstances or conditions, including irregularity, narrowness, or shallowness of the lot size or shape, or exceptional topographical or other physical conditions peculiar to the particular property, and that the unnecessary hardship is due to such condition and not the circumstances or conditions generally created by the provisions of the zoning ordinance in the neighborhood or district which the property is located. Um, could you explain how you feel you meet that criteria? On the, the western and southern portion of my property, um, that area I could fence in as per the ordinance. However, it drops off quite steeply. Okay, and I... Um, 
while I was waiting for the hearing to get started, I did look um, for an R2 zoned lot. Um, the minimum lot width is 50 feet. And then you have an ir irregularly shaped lot. It's not, not, it's not a square or rectangle. Um, so your two, two widths are 80.23 80 feet, 99.7 feet. So you do kind of meet the minimum width. Um, and then with just kind of from simple math of taking the average of the two widths and the average of the two depths, you're at um, 9,973 square feet. Um, and that puts um, the minimum for, for the R2 is 6,000 minimum. So you do, um, your, your lot is not unique in shape or size. Um, it's actually larger than what's required by ordinance. Um, however, I, um, I did note about the topography. Um, the second part of the, or the second requirement <clears throat> is that su such, or that because of such physical circumstances or conditions, there is no possibility that the property can be developed in strict conformity with the provisions of the zoning ordinance and that the authorization of a variance is therefore necessary to enable the reasonable use of the property. Would you be able to speak on that one? So with the, the current setup, um, it just would not be economically feasible to put in a fence um, to maximize the, the area. Um, I would not be able to achieve what I would like to do with my property. Would you be able to utilize, could you utilize your property um, without a fence? Um, not with my pet. And you mentioned that your pet was attacked um, three times by other dogs. Yes. Was that at this current property? Yes. Um, how long have you um, resided or owned the property? I'm assuming you did not build that the house. Correct. I can interrupt and ma'am, you owned it prior or still owned the property. My apologies. You owned the property previous to 2010? No. No, 2000, 2010 is when you purchased yes. it. Okay. All right, thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, the third criteria is that such unnecessary hardship has not been created by the appellant. Um, based on, it's I kind of got ahead of myself a little bit with, with some of my other questions, um, but you did not build the house, you purchased it as is. Um, I guess, do you know um, approximately the age of the house when it was built? Um, it was... It was one of the first houses in the neighborhood. I believe it was constructed circa 1920. Um, the fourth criteria is that the variance, if authorized, will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood or district in which the property is located, nor substantially or permanently impair the, appro the appropriate use or development of adjacent property, nor to be detrimental to the public welfare. Um, did you talk to any of your neighbors about your proposed plan? Um, I did. Um, I spoke to um, my neighbor um, across the alleyway, um, Mary Ann Kunold. Um, she was perfectly happy with us putting in a fence. And then you mentioned that there were other homes, but more in Dormont um, that have fences close to the alley. Correct. Are there any of those homes on the same side of the alley that you are on? Uh, no, there aren't any other homes um, along that side of the alley. Um, it opens up into Kelton Field, which was uh, the old Dormont Elementary School. You can see that um, on figure figure two shows that. And 
the, um, I guess you said the type of fence, is a four foot high wooden fence or is it, um, or is it gonna do painted, um, natural kind of? Um, natural and stained. The last criteria, the fifth one is that the variance if authorized will represent the minimum variance that will afford relief and will represent the least modification possible um, of the regulation and issue. Okay, can you explain on um, how you, I guess, came about the footprint that you're requesting and how, how that meets that criteria that it's the minimum necessary to achieve your intended use? Um, the, the, the fence as shown, I was trying to maximize the use of my property for open area um, so my, my pet could run. Um, no further questions at this time. Follow up, what, what type of dog do you have? Um, it's a golden retriever. Can you describe the topography in the back? You said it's steep. Like, can you just go into more detail what what that means? Um, sure. Uh, let's see if I can point you in the right direction of the photographs. Mm -hmm. um, so, if you look at photograph number two, that shows the drop off from my driveway, um, which grades into the the Keystone Oaks property. Um, we also have to fight with the knotweed along that slope, which is the bane of my existence. Um, but it drops, it's, it's quite steep. Um, you definitely have to have very, um, sure footage, um, when you're walking down that slope. And there's, you see, it says KOSD fence. So there's a fence of some sort by the school district. Yes, and that fence actually hasn't been maintained. Mm -hmm. That fence location representative of the property line? No, I believe it's a few feet um, back of the property line. So if you were going, so I'm looking at this photograph too that you had mentioned, and you said you Fence, the existing fence is a few feet from the property line. So your property line is still on the level section before the drop off? I am not quite certain exactly where that is. The, the pins um, of my property, I believe were actually paved over in the alley when they replaced the gas line. So I wasn't able to locate one of the pins. Um, so it was a little bit difficult to find. Um, if you look at Figure one, you can very faintly see the, the KO property um, or fence line behind the property line. I know this is an aerial and there, there's definitely some skewness to where the property lines actually are. Um. My, uh, reviewing my notes to see if I have any questions. Do you know, and ah, any questions? When I'm looking at the survey, it has a yellow hashed line through that. What does that represent? Um, that yellow line is, um, what the building inspector um, drew on my application showing where I could put in a fence or what the actual setback would be. I understand. Thank you. I 
I have no further questions. Mr. Compton, do you have further questions? I do not have any further questions. Not at the moment. Okay, thank you. Um, you can sit. We're going to chat with the uh, inspection for you. Okay, cool. Uh, Mr. Sarver, if you will state the position of the inspection office. Uh, the municipality's position is that uh, I believe in January, January 30th, they applied for a fence permit uh, and they submitted um, a marked up survey that you have, which shows the, the survey and the red markings with the X's showing the proposed location um, of that. And then I followed up with a review comment uh, March 9th, I'm sorry. Yes, March 9th, um, I responded basically advising them that I could not issue the permit um, for the reason that the proposed fencing was in the front yard in accordance with the ordinance and advised them of the particular section that was in violation. Uh, I then had some correspondence back and forth. And as just mentioned, I scanned over a copy of the survey that they submitted showing that the red fencing proposed location and I drew on in blue uh, the existing building lines or the front setback lines uh, and then highlighted those on both sides so those along Mississippi Avenue and Coma Alley and then you can see uh, along Coma Alley uh, I put some notes up top says 35 feet front yard per section 203.5.3.1.1.1 of the zoning ordinance and then the front yard along or the building line along Mississippi Avenue is established by the existing front face of the house as you can see based on that survey the house next door the building line jumps back to 35 feet along that that side so this house is in front of the other houses uh, down Mississippi. Um, so um, I advised them that if they wanted to change the location, I could reissue the permit or issue a permit. Um, and then they chose to uh, apply for the variance. Mm -hmm. So um, as you mentioned, with the submittals, there was some photographs um, the main reason for this needed variance would be the fact that corner lots have two front yards by definition in the zoning ordinance each yard fronting along each street is considered a front yard uh, what determines the depth of the front yard is that building line setback that i had marked on there um, as far as the exhibit a that was submitted um, if you look at the very first one uh, that says Scott Road on it. That is not a corner lot, even though it looks like a corner lot. Uh, there's a strip of land in there between Scott Road and that fence. So that is not technically a corner lot because they have that house has no frontage along Scott Road because there's a thin sliver of land between there. Um, the second page, I don't know where those are at, and I can't see any fencing in those photographs. Yeah, without seeing surveys, um, it looks like the third page. I don't, I'm not familiar with that top photo. Looks like the bottom photo butts up against the garage. So the garage would establish that building line. Therefore, it's probably behind the building line and not in the front yard. So just, just for the record, there are multiple building lines based on different recorded plans based on different setbacks. Um, so some might go as little as five feet, some go 10 feet, some go 20, um, but where there is none shown, it's 35 feet per the ordinance. Um, so some of these may be, I, I just don't know. Um, the fourth page, I don't know what those are. 
And I know the last one that is behind the building line as well. That's on the corner of Catalpa and Richland. So uh, I believe I issued that fence permit um, about a year and a half or two years ago. And that setback was about 9.87 feet or something like that, if memory serves me correctly. Uh, and it, and based on that, that same section of the ordinance that where it, that establishes the front yard, it says where there is a lot established between two adjacent lots, you take the average of those and that's how that setback was established. I have nothing further to add unless anybody has any questions. Did the uh, commission have any? No comment from them. Any comment? Very good. Um, Mr. Campanari, do you have questions? I, I do not at the time. And Mr. Rother? Uh, yes, I do. Um, Coma Alley, does, uh, is that owned by Mount Lebanon or Stormont? No, it's the, the line, as you can see on the survey, the line is right along the property line. So that's that alley is actually in Dormont. And I think if you go on Google, I think it's called something different, correct? Um, okay. Yeah, so at some point in time, either it just got established that name or probably Dormont changed the physical name of it. But probably on the recorded plan, it's called Coma Alley. Are you aware of any um, any utilities Subsurface utilities or overhead utilities down Coma Ave or Coma Alley. Uh, in the alley, no, because again, that would be in Dormont. Um, I can see. Um, now it looks like the the sanitary is out front along Mississippi for this house. I would assume because there actually is no sewer coming up to this lot. So whether there's a lateral that goes across the street along Mississippi, I don't know, but we are showing no municipal uh, facilities near there. No further questions. Mr. Sherber, do you happen to know whether the Dormont Code would identify this side yard as a front yard as we do? And you may not be familiar with Dormont Code. So I do not know. Do not know. Thank you. Um, do we happen to know when the alley was constructed? Was it part of the original plan? Was it after the house was built? Yeah, I really don't know. All I can say is based on my experience, it looks like this lot was is a deeded lot, so it's not in a subdivision. Mm -hmm. Whereas the lot next door, you can see on the survey, it says lot eight, and it's in the George McConnell plan. So probably all the rest of the houses down Mississippi were part of a new plan. So this house was probably the original house, you know, in that area. Mm -hmm. As far as the Dormont side, I, I do not know other than the fact when you look at the aerial, you can see multiple houses, um, you know, on the aerial. So I would assume that those are in recorded plans as well. And I would assume maybe that's how Coma Alley got established uh, because it's in Dormont. So I would assume that that's part of, of the recorded plan that's in Dormont. And there's probably verbiage in your deed that allows you access onto that because you're not part of that recorded plan. For ordinance, um, 
when we identify what a corner lot is, um, it does not matter what type of street is. It doesn't matter whether it's a paper street or an alley or a full street. There's no preference or no, there's no distinguishing within no. the ordinance. Um, no, but to answer your question more clearly, if I could just read it, it says front yard. Um, it gives the definition, basically an open space extending the full width of the lot between the front, I'm sorry, between a main front building line and the front lot line, unoccupied and unobstructed by buildings or structures from the ground upward, the depth of which shall be the least distance between the front lot line and the front of the main front building line, period. On corner lots, the front yard shall be both yards that front on the streets, period. In the case uh, of uses with parcels with the, without a principal building, uh, the front yard shall be a line drawn parallel to the front lot line, a distance equal to the depth of the required front yard setback. And then when you go to definition of street, uh, because it refers to yards along both streets, The definition of a street is includes a street, comma, alley, comma, boulevard, comma, road, comma, highway, comma, freeway, comma, parkway, comma, alley, lane, viaduct, and any other way used or intended to be used by vehicular traffic or pedestrians, whether public or private. Thank you. Wait, can you say that again? By used by traffic. Uh, it lists all those types, and then it says, and any other ways used or intended to be used by vehicular traffic or pedestrians, whether public or private. There's no distinction of if it's not a Mount Lebanon. Street now. Uh, any further questions, Mr. Company? No. Mr. Rothery? No. Okay. Um, I have no further questions as well. So we are going to enter executive session. We have a special matter and we'll come back out.
that we're back on the record. Um, before we proceed, I just want to note that there were no uh, no other people in the room today to offer testimony, and there was nobody online to offer saying. So uh, with that, uh, we are ready to vote. Um, Mr. Campanero, uh, how do you vote? I, I vote to approve the variance request. And Mr. Rother? I vote to approve. And I also vote to approve. So we'll fill out the proper paperwork, and you'll be uh, the zoning office will communicate that to you. So with that, we're off the record. So thank you. Those crazy dorm launchers. <laughs> 